All I can say to that song is wow. Yes. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you. I give, I give you my heart, God. Amen. I give you my soul. Yes. yes. Who better to trust it with? Amen. You give your heart to this world. Hmm. You give your soul to Satan. Hmm. I would give my heart to God as soon as possible. Yeah. I would give my soul to God as soon as possible. Mm -hmm. Our Father, in the name of Jesus, we simply come to you once again, thanking you for all that you've done for us. Yeah. Thank you for your spirit being in the midst of us right now. Thank you for letting everybody have a sense of peace, a yes. sense of joy, a yes. sense of strength, a yes. sense of uh, love. Father, we just thank you, thank you for your presence, and we know that you will be coming back soon. Yes. And we know that you will be taking us to your home. Yeah. And we will be with you forever in heaven. So we just thank you in advance. And we thank you for your presence. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 I am, I am, uh, what's a good word to put? I, I think that uh, it troubles me like all during the week. I get all these scams on my phone. Somebody's always trying to sell me something. Somebody's always trying to buy something from me. Somebody is always trying to tell me I owe money. I got a couple of phone calls saying that you need to pay your student loan off or we're going to come get you. <laughs> student loan? Yeah. I haven't had a student loan in years. So, so these are numbers. People wanting to buy my house. Yeah. Another one says the IRS uh, is coming after me. And, and, and I pity someone who does who really has a student loan because they might be afraid. Mm -hmm. And people trying to buy my house. I know if, if, if people are trying to buy my house, they're, they're not doing me any good. Mm -hmm. So if you get any of these phone, these phone calls or any of these texts, just ignore them. Right. Amen? Amen. Because all they're trying to do is come in and steal. They all they're trying to do is, is, is to destroy us. Mm -hmm. All they're trying to do is just to get at us, to kill us. That's all they're trying to do. Mm -hmm. Just like Satan. Yep. Satan uses many schemes to come after us. Mm -hmm. He's always probing, always texting, always call, calling, always trying to start something. That, that's why and we can go there. First Peter no, chapter 8. Just go there. Peter has a word about this, this, this devil. This destroyer, this Satan, this he tells us to be on guard, to be aware. And you know, there's some people who don't even believe he exists. First Peter chapter chapter 5 verse 8. First Peter chapter 5 verse 8. Are you with me? First Peter chapter five, verse eight. Peter says, "Be sober." Yes, sir. Okay. Well, that that just means just get ready. Be vigilant. Keep your eyes looking out, because your adversary, not just my adversary, Amen. Yeah. Your adversary. Yeah. Who is we even call his name out? The devil. Mm -hmm. He's he's like a roaring lion walking about seeking whom he may what? Devour. Devour. He's looking to take you out. I know church is a beautiful thing, and I know that we Christians are beautiful things, but you have to understand we have a common enemy. Mm -hmm. And our economy, our common enemy is the devil. And Peter would tell you to just watch out. Be sober, be vigilant. Don't, don't pay. You know, what happens to an animal if it doesn't pay attention? What does a lion do? You sometimes you see these, these, these animals.
got their heads down and they're eating grass and they're bouncing around and they're happy and they're smiling and having a good old time, right? And all of a sudden, out of nowhere, right? A lot of us, we, 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 we go about our lives, we do, you know, come to church and do all the stuff and, 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 and out of nowhere, it just pops up, don't it? Okay, and that, that, that's why the Bible says always be looking for them, right? The Bible goes on to say, verse 9, it says uh, about uh, this, this that who resist, who, whom resist steadfast in the faith. And he says, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. In other words, all of us are going through the same thing. Everybody who's a brethren or a sister or someone who believes in Jesus Christ, Satan is hunting them down. But I'm not worried. Are you worried? No, sir. As long as we do what God says, right? Watch out for him. He's always coming. What he's trying to do is, is, is take us unguarded. Right? Amen? Amen. Those phone calls I get. You know, I, I saw one the other day. Uh, I called me and uh, I didn't, it was a strange number that, that I had never recognized. And How many people know I got a call blocker? Right? And, and these call blockers, what they're, what they're designed to do is, is anybody who's not in your contact list, it doesn't answer. It goes straight, straight to voicemail, right? Thank God for those things. Those calls I get. But this one call, I saw it, and, I, and for some reason, I'm like, maybe this is a good one. Maybe somebody's going to call me and give me some good news, right? I said, hello? I said, they say, hello, is this Larry? I said, yeah, this is Larry. They said, did your social security number in with you? I said, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> I don't know you. <laughs> right? And, 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 and the lady said, well, we're going to be sending you a, a letter. I don't know the letter either. Right? I don't know you. I don't know who you are. And and, and I, what I'm trying to say is leave me alone. Right? Amen? Because you got you to be on guard. Right? Am I the only one to get these? No, no, sir. So just like you're on guard for... These, these strange phone calls, you need to be on guard for Satan. Amen. Satan is looking to destroy us. One of the worst things you can have is a, is a, is a, is a Christian who has fallen to the trap of Satan. A Christian who, who indwells inside of them with the Holy Spirit. And Satan has deceived them. It's fall. Go with me to Galatians chapter 5. Galatians chapter 5. Satan has deceived us. I had uh, heard of a conversation where, uh, and you, you guys see all the scams now of, of, of the guys calling you saying that if you, you need to go buy, what do they call them, gift certificates? Mm -hmm. or you need to go buy $500 worth of gift certificates and give me your number and do it as, quick, as soon as possible, right? Mm -hmm. Otherwise, we're going to come and get you. We're going to turn your electric off. We're going to turn your gas off. We're going to turn your water off, right? Amen. And we'll tell you right now, don't do it. Don't do it, right? And if Satan offers you something that, that, that's too good to be true, don't do it. In fact, if Satan offers you anything, right? Do what? Don't do it. Amen. And, and I just want to share this. Satan uses... You know, three plays. All he has is three plays in his arsenal. For those of you who play sports, right? Three plays. That's all. He only has three things he does. Mm -hmm. When you're when you're good at what you do, you're good at deception. All you do, all you need is three plays. Mm -hmm. First play number one: lust of the flesh. Mm -hmm. Right? People who have who, who have not overcome the flesh, Satan's gonna offer you lust. Mm -hmm. Lust of the flesh. What? What else? Lust of the eyes. Yeah. Yeah. Right? If you don't know the the close your eyes in certain situations, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. And what? Right, right, right. Y'all know the three plays, right? Mm -hmm. He uses three plays, and he gets us, right? Yeah. If you can't control your flesh, mm -hmm. you're in trouble. Yeah. If you can't control your eyes, you're in trouble. Mm -hmm. If you think more highly of yourself mm -hmm. than you ought to, mm -hmm. then you're in trouble, right? Because yeah. ain't nobody in this room. Right? Amen? Yeah. Yeah. And what he does is he captivates and he traps people. That's what he does. He captivates and he traps and he traps. And look what the Bible says. Here's, here's how you know if you've been trapped. Right? Amen? Verse 19 says, uh, Now the works of the flesh 
are manifest. In other words, revealed. In other words, the Bible is going to say, we're going to tell you what the words of the, what the uh, works of the flesh are right now. The Bible says, the works of the flesh are these. Right? Number one is adultery. No, and, and, and the Bible is really, really clear. And, and, and adultery is, is something that the Bible will get you stoned in the Old Testament. Remember the lady who was caught in the midst of adultery? And, and, and all, the, all the, 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 the people said, the law of Moses says we should stone her. And they all reached down and started grabbing rocks. And they said, Jesus, what do you say we should do? So, so anybody in, in, who's participating in, I, I'm, there's nobody like that in this church. No, sir. I'm talking to the people on uh, Facebook Live. I'm not talking about anybody, anybody in this church, right? Wow. Yeah. 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 That's right. People on Facebook Live saying, no, you're not talking about us either. either. Yeah. We all know better, right? All right. right. Uh, adultery is, is using someone else's spouse. That's wrong. If you love somebody, you wouldn't do that. And the Bible goes, see, these are the works of the flesh. This is how you know whether or not you're working in the flesh or not. If you're not married, guess what? That person's not yours. So, so guess what? You should do. The Bible says it's better to that what? Burn. Find your own husband. Amen. Find your own wife. Amen. And be true to them. Amen. 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 When I was uh, when I was coming up, uh, I, I used to, nah, don't talk about me. No, I'm talking about me. They used to always they used to, I used to think that if you live with somebody, the government all, already thinks that you're married, so that's like being married. Right? If you live with somebody long enough, right? No, 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 no. That doesn't work either. The Bible goes on to say fornication. Mm. There's a whole list of stuff going on with fornication: homosexuality, le les lesbianism, uh, incest, divorce. Visuality, blah, blah, blah. Leviticus 18 goes into all of that stuff. That stuff is against the word of God. Amen. The Bible says uncleanness. Uh, being unclean um, physically, morally, okay. or impure. Uh, one of the things that used to happen is uncleanness, would, you would be ashamed of something. Mm -hmm. So anything that you would be ashamed of, right, that's what you should be doing. Mm -hmm. Right? If there's something right now in your life that's going on that you would be ashamed of to, to do right in front of church right now, you should be doing Amen. Because although we don't see it, I know this is a hard one. Lasciviousness. That, that's, that's the kind of person who has no breaks. They get started and don't get and don't stop. Mm -hmm. the, Bible, the Bible says uh, idolatry is the next one, and, and that's just worship of primarily money. And, and <clears throat> Number six says witchcraft and sauce. Witchcraft is nothing more than sorcery, magic, uh, drug use. That's right. If you're if you do drugs, you're a witch, according to the Bible, or you're a warlock. And I had an interesting conversation with somebody once. Uh, they told me they said, I said, "Pastor, I don't do that one." Yeah. <laughs> what are sixteen more? Yeah. So if there's one you don't do, <laughs> you got plenty of time. Well, this is this is this is one hatred. Somebody who's always hostile. Somebody always trying to start trouble and drama and variance. That that's somebody who quarrels all the time. Always wants to debate with you all the time. Emulations. Those are people who are jealous all the time. They they start trouble, contentious, defending anything. People who have wrath. It's just people with strong emotion and anger and love. Uh, they just have this this strong passion or emotion in their mind. So somebody with wrath will immediately strike back at you. Strife. The Bible defines that as selfish ambition, putting one's uh, self first. In other words, it's 
when you start thinking of, of that, you start thinking of somebody who's who thinks about themselves. It's all about me. The whole world revolves around me, and and that is against the word of God. The Bible talks about uh, seductions, divisions, heresies, envying. And so a person who envies a person who has a, a strong desire for something that somebody else has, mm -hmm. right? You're jealous of what somebody else has. And then the Bible goes on to talk about drunkenness, people who um, are intoxicated, strong drink, there's drunkenness on. For anybody who's going to watch the game today and have a couple, have one, have two. Mm -hmm. I just spoiled your day, didn't I? <laughs> yeah. I didn't spoil nothing, the word of God. That, that is not of God. And I know people always say, Oh, Jesus had wine? Yeah, yeah he had Kool Aid kind. Mm -hmm. Right? You know, the, the kind that don't get you. Yeah. <laughs> and that reviling is, is feast and parties. So anybody who operates like that is in the flesh. Even a Christian can act, operate like that. Amen. So if, if, if I see if I see Brother Daryl doing something that's in the flesh, I can automatically say to myself, "He's in the flesh." Amen. If he's angry, if he's rebellious, yeah. right? if, if, you know, and, 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 and if he's doing something he shouldn't be doing. Amen. Amen. Yeah. And Satan deceives people into doing things like that. Yeah. Lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, pride of life, and then they lead you away. Amen. 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 Bible declares there's two who are who's after our souls. Satan is after your soul. Mm -hmm. God is after your soul. Mm -hmm. Satan comes to kill, steal, and destroy. Mm -hmm. Jesus comes to and what? Satan. Jesus comes to give us a better life. Mm -hmm. Satan comes to steal, mm -hmm. kill, mm -hmm. and destroy. And anybody who's lived that kill, steal, destroy life know how much of a wreck he can do. Yeah. Right? Amen? Amen? He can destroy your life. Even before he gets started. Amen. With all of this stuff, adultery, fornication, wrath, hatred, drug use, idolatry, all this stuff. He uses all this stuff to destroy your life and my life. Amen. And some of it he got away with. Amen? Amen. But who? God. But God. But God. But I, let, me, let me finish reading this. Verse 21 says, but envy and murder is drunkenness, reviling, and such like which I tell you before, as I have also told you in times past. He says it for also in 1 Corinthians chapter 6. The same thing he's telling us right now. So he's, he told the Corinthian church, and he's telling the Galatians church, and now God is telling you faith ministry church. Amen. It doesn't change. In 2,000 years, it has not changed. It will never change. The word of God. Amen? Amen. And what the one says, they that which do such things shall not inherit what? Amen. Those who do such things. Mm -hmm. So the next time you get tempted, mm -hmm. you look and you say, is that worth me going to be not to have it? Right? Mm -hmm. If I continue in that kind of behavior, is that worth me not going to have it? Is there anything worth me not going to heaven for? Mm -hmm. Ah. But Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. Mm -hmm. Thank God for the good shepherd. Amen. Yeah. Thank God that Satan can be bound and cast aside. Mm -hmm. Please go with me to John chapter 10. I just want to talk about the good shepherd. Remember, the thief comes to, to do what? Steal. But God comes what? So we, we already just saw what Satan comes to do. And how he comes to do it. And what he, the three plans he uses. Lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, and pride of life. You know, same three plans. Sends people straight to hell. But God says, I'm the good shepherd. I am the good shepherd. John chapter 10. John chapter 10. John chapter 10. I 
Now, wouldn't it be nice if somebody called you on your phone and said, I'm just going to give you $1,000? Huh? That's, that's another scam. <laughs> the world is messed up, isn't it? The world is, you can tell by the way the world is acting is that Satan has his hand it's all over. Mm-hmm. One of the things that um, Satan is, he's a murderer. Mm-hmm. Y'all, last year, 100, almost 180 people in this city were murdered. Mm-hmm. Who's, who's busy right now? Satan's busy. This year already, one person's been murdered. Mm-hmm. That's Satan. That's his footprints. That, that tells you right then and there, he's been here. Mm-hmm. Amen. Amen? Already. It used to be that if you were grown and you went to the, you could go to the store at any time of the day, any time of the night. Mm-hmm. Now the people who are older, they're going to shop early in the morning. Mm-hmm. And be at home by. <laughs> Y'all know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. When it gets dark, right? Because that's why we preach Jesus in the spiritual. Because he's the only one who can change this. John chapter 10, verse 9. John chapter 10, verse 9. The good shepherd. The good, 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 good shepherd. Amen. Jesus talks about, in verse 9, he says, I am the door. Mm-hmm. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved. Mm-hmm. And shall go in and out and find what? Mm-hmm. What the God is saying is, I'm the door. Mm-hmm. I am the doorway. I'm the good shepherd. I'm the one at the door. You know, when, 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 when you come in this church, the first person you see is Avon with a smiling face. Mm-hmm. When you go to heaven, the first person you're going to see is Jesus with a smiling face. Yeah. I am the door. Yeah. Yeah. And if he's in charge of the door, he's, he wants to open a door for each and every one of us. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. And he says, he goes, the thief cometh not but to what? Yeah. Anybody who runs with Satan, that's what you're going to get. Yeah. You hang out with him, you're going to get, that's what you're going to get. There's nothing else you can get. And the Bible says, Jesus says, I come that they might have what? And that they might have it what? Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giveth what? In other words, Jesus said, I'm the good shepherd and I gave my life for you on Calvary. Amen? Amen. You know, as a, as a pastor, you look around and you see and you, you, you try to um, communicate this to people and try to understand that it's a trap. It's a trap. If, if you listen to Satan, it's a trap. If you listen to God, it's it's blessing, it's eternal life. Right? Amen? Amen. And, 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 and even churches can fall into this trap. Amen? Amen. So, 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 when Jesus opens the door, what does he open the door to? Go, go back to Galatians chapter 5 with me. Galatians chapter 5. Galatians chapter Jesus opens the door. This is what he opens the door to. Galatians chapter 5, verse 22. Okay? Here's how you know that you're walking with Christ, right? The, the Bible says if you walk the Spirit, walk with, if you're led by the Spirit, you're not under the law, right? 
Okay, and the Bible says in verse 26, he says, but the fruit of the Spirit is what? Love, yeah. Well, we took time to tell what Satan was up to. Let's take time to say what God is up to. Right? Let's, let, let, you're right. You're exactly right. That, that's a fruit. In other words, you can tell when somebody has been, that God has opened a door and, 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 and they've entered in and God has entered in. Because the first thing that you're going to notice about them is love. That's what you got to notice. Right? It says the fruit of the Spirit is what? Love. That means brotherly love, affection, goodwill toward one another. Right? The Bible goes on to say, the next thing is going to be is joy. In other words, joy is, is a internal cheerfulness. No matter what the external is, you're still internally cheerful and happy. No matter what happens, y'all, guess what? No matter what happens in this life, guess what? We're all going to heaven. Going to heaven. I know circumstances can get bad, right? But ultimately, guess where we're going to end up? Heaven. Heaven. Right? And nobody can take that from us. Right? The Bible goes on to say, peace. Amen? You can always tell when God's work with somebody because peace is, a, is a, just a calm delight. Just peaceful. Right? Just, 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 just peaceful. Just got, you got love. You love everybody. You're cheerful. And you're just calm and you're delightful. And the Bible goes on to say, long suffering. And that's just a person who's patient. Long suffering is just patient. So when God works with you, you learn patience. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Imagine meeting somebody who loves. Imagine meeting somebody who uh, is always cheerful, always calm, and who's patient. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's a Christian. And the Bible says gentleness. You know what gentleness means? It's just usefulness. You're so gentle that God can use you, mm -hmm. right? Usefulness, right? And kindness. The Bible says that um, goodness is 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 is, is it, it's kind of like a virtue or um, a, um, benevolence. In other words, somebody will say to you, as a Christian, that you are a good person. Amen? Amen. And that's a fruit of the Spirit. The fruit of the Spirit means that, uh, it's a virtue. It's a, it's a benevolence. In other words, when you, one of the people in the Bible who, who you, we all think that it's virtuous is who? Yeah. Well, that means what? She was a good person. Right? Everybody would say she's a virtuous or a good person. Right? And you can just tell it. So you, you, the, 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 the spirit of a person, the fruit of a person just comes out. Yeah. It just comes out. It just spills out. Mm -hmm. Right? You can tell those who are eyes and who are not. Mm -hmm. Right? Because these are fruits that are given to us by God. And, and the Bible says the last one is faith. Mm -hmm. It is a convic conviction that God exists. Satan comes with all this mess. Mm -hmm. You see it? Confusion and anger and wrath and fornication and adultery and all this mess. Satan is 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 a liar, a thief. And he looks to destroy us with all this stuff. He uses his lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, and pride of life to just destroy us. Right? And Jesus comes. And Jesus comes that we may have and a, a more abundant life. And what Jesus offers us is love. What? Peace. What? Long suffering, right? See the big difference? Acting worldly is, is what Satan does. Like, right? I want the fruit. You got the fruit. You might want more. You got the fruit. But God gives us this stuff. That's not only for us, but for other people too. Yeah. Amen. Right? Amen? Amen. 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 Brother Dave just told us. He said that he was going through a situation and he just prayed God to God and God brought peace over him and just healed him. 
Right? Amen. Amen. So, so these are things that God offers to each and every one of us believers. Mm -hmm. And I want I want um, I want to talk a little bit of one one final verse, and, and let's go all the way back, and let's go all the way to the Book of Revelations because I want to just just wrap this up with these this this beautiful scripture here, um, Revelation chapter three. Revelation. Mm -hmm. Last one, Revelation chapter three. Where, how many people know we're in the last last days? Yeah. Last church age, final state of apostasy. Uh, we're getting close to the time where Jesus is going to uh, show himself to the whole world. Jesus is talking to this uh, this church. And, you know, this church in the last age is will either be either hot hot nor cold, but lukewarm. And Jesus said, "I don't want a lukewarm church." Yeah. Right. Like, right? Amen? Amen? I don't want a lukewarm church, Jesus Amen. said. I want a hot church. Right? I don't want a lukewarm church. I want somebody who's, who's passionate about me in these last days. Right? I, uh, one of the things that I like, and, and I know Brother Daryl likes, is coffee. But I like coffee that's hot, right? Me? Hot coffee, nothing like hot coffee, right? With cream in it. Hazelnut, right? Milk and that's, that just makes me just so happy in the morning. First thing. But what happens if you don't drink the coffee for about 20 minutes? And then you take a sip. And what's the first thing you do? Yeah. Because what? It got lukewarm. And that's the same thing with God. He doesn't want a church to sit around and do nothing. He just, the Bible says he will spew us out. We got to be on fire for God, especially in these last days. Amen. And look what the Bible says. The Bible says, Jesus says, verse 19. 319. Mm -hmm. As many as I love, what? Mm -hmm. And chastise. In other words, God says, if I love you, I'm going to correct you. Mm -hmm. If you're one of my children, I'm going to correct you. I'm not just going to let you get away with anything. Mm -hmm. And he says, be zealous, therefore, and what? Repent. Repent. He goes on, he says, Behold, I stand at the door and I knock. God stands at the door of our hearts and knocks. He wants to come in. Amen? Not only our hearts, but every, every heart on this planet, God is knocking on the hearts. Let me in, let me in, let me in. I'll change your life. Right? Amen? Amen. Amen. If any man hears my voice, and what? Oh. I will come into him and will what? So, and he with me. In other words, that's a relationship. I'm, I'm, I want to come into your life. I want to come into your heart. I want to change you. I want to give you the fruit of the Spirit. If you open your heart, let me in. Not only will I come in, but the Father will come in. And it, it says, verse 21 To him that overcometh, I will grant to sit with me in my throne. Even that also overcame and has sat down with my Father in his throne. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the church. In other words, God saying, let me in. 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 Church, I'm believing that God is looking for a church that is on fire for Him. God is looking for a church that loves Him. And I would even say that it would be good to present ourselves as a church without spot. But we come before him yes, sir. with issues of our lives dealt with to allow him to deal with our lives. And I just want to just, just encourage you to just hang on, to hang in there. Because God is a and I'm gonna ask um Brother Avon to come up and pray for us and close us. Now, Father, we thank you. We thank you for all your abundant mercy and all your love which you show us. Father God, we pray in the upcoming week that, Father God, that we will learn to adopt your fruit. Father God, that we will loose 
things that Satan wants to do with us with works. And that, Father God, we may carry you, Father God, unto others. To tell them about your great abundant love through your son, Jesus Christ. Father God, be with us as we go home. Father God, we just ask, Father God, that you watch over our families in the upcoming week. And Father God, we pray to you and we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Now can we all raise our right hands so we can dismiss. May the Lord watch between me and thee. May the Lord watch between me and thee. While we are absent one from another. While we are absent one from another. May the church say, Amen. God bless everyone and enjoy your Sunday. How are you?